Welcome to another Bitcoin Cash Builder interview. I'm George Donnelly, and today I'm here with Peter Ng of the SLP Foundation. Uh, Peter, how you doing today? Great. Awesome. Happy to. Yeah, happy to have you. So, um, Peter, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, your involvement with Bitcoin Cash? You know, you you do the SLP Foundation. You're a miner. Maybe just give us a little background on you. Yeah, that's basically it. I also trade OTC. So three things I do. Cool. Um, uh, I've been in Bitcoin for a long time. Um, 2012. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know anything about trading. I don't know anything about hardware, but it was a hobby back then. So and it was easy to do. So. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. So basically mining, trading, that pays for my team, but I spend most of my time doing stuff I like in crypto. Mm -hmm. It's still primarily a hobby of mine. And, and what is the stuff you like in crypto? BCH primarily. That's 90% interested in BCH. Okay. And why? Yeah. What's, what's, what, for you, what's special? I mean, I know what's special for me about Bitcoin Cash. I know what's special for a lot of people, but for you... What do you, what would you say is, is special for Bitcoin cash? Um, everything else is useless. Mm. You can't use it. Anything else. Yeah. I mean, like back in the day you, you get into a meetup. The first thing you do is send someone some Bitcoin and explain it to them how it works. Right. You can't do that anymore. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, here in so original passion. Yeah. yeah, yeah, here in Medellin, um, Colombia, we you know have been doing different adoption activities. We have a few hundred uh, merchants, and um, there were some people who there was a small group who said, "Well, we're going to do what you're doing, but with Bitcoin BTC." <laughs> and <laughs> you know, I was kind of like. Mm. You know, I don't know about that, but they were very, very insistent and forceful about it. So I said, good luck, you know, let me know if you need any help. And I just yeah. found out yesterday that they completely went out of business, you know. How's and Dash doing? How's Dash doing? Yeah, do they have a lot of merchant adoption as well? No, I did all of it for them here. <laughs> and if I'm not supporting it, the merchants don't, are, are, you know, the merchants are, aren't, aren't going to keep doing it. I heard that uh, Dash is pretty good on adoption as well, just maybe not as good as Bitcoin Cash. I mean, I hear they have pretty good, strong community. I hear. Well, a lot, you know, like a lot, like at least in you know, Latin America, which was the strong suit of Dash, uh, mm -hmm. a large percentage of that was me and my team. I mean, me and my team were in. Uh, 20 cities, eight countries, three continents, and we were responsible for 1,300 uh, merchants across all that space. And, you know, all of that was kind of reaching its peak at a moment when a third party actually did a, a report on the supposed 2,500 merchants that they had in Caracas and discovered that, like, all of them were at the same address, <laughs> <laughs> you know. So, so why, why don't that for BCH? Say that again. Why don't you do that for BCH? Oh, I am. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what I've been doing for about, um, you know, I don't know, probably about 15, 16 months. The thing is that uh, in the beginning, the community bought some of our tokens, so they funded us a bit. And that enabled us to kind of push ahead very slowly. Um, but then the whole coronavirus thing hit. And so, um, we're, we're definitely doing that. And this year now we're, you know, we've been pushing very hard. We restarted very hard now in January. And I think we've, uh, reaffiliated at least, uh, 50 to 75 merchants, uh, by now in Caracas, uh, Medellin and in San Cristobal, which is uh, uh, in Venezuela, and it's right on the border with Colombia. So there's a huge amount of cross-border trade there, which is really wow, interesting. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other talents in Dash that we can make good use of? <laughs> <laughs> there we was... <laughs> we want more now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was one... 
but um, I think he has some kind of Stockholm syndrome. So I, I gave up trying. Uh, well, if you know of any, feel free to introduce, and I'll charm them into uh, the fun place <laughs> that is BCH. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll do. Yeah. We'll do. Money is not as good, but we live for idealism. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. No, and it's more. It's more sustainable. Like over there, the whole treasury thing, you know, would became yeah. a, a huge yeah. source of stress uh, for me, and I think it is for a lot of people because. I would uh, like, like from like day ten or twelve of each month, I would be like fighting to get the funding to for the next month, and then around day like twenty eight, you know, I got it, and then you know I rested for a couple of days, and then I had ten days to work, and then I had to go back to work fighting for the funding. It was like seriously, I gained like twenty pounds, and I developed stress headaches. I mean, it just it was unbearable. Because they're huddling to dash and doesn't want to sell, or what's the, what's the issue? Well, the, over there, there's a fixed amount, about ten percent of the monthly bo block reward that you know is ah. gonna be. It's either gonna be apportioned, or it's or it's gonna you know effectively be burned. You know, it's not really burned; it's just never created. But um, like that money's there; it's not coming out of anybody's pocket. So um, it's a new, you know, and there's a new budget session like that every month. So. I think that's the issue with all these um, funding that's based on the base token, that volatility kills kills growth. And then once there's volatility, that you can't financially plan. I'm not saying that they did a good thing at Treasury, but it is difficult, right? Yeah. How do you know how much to sell now or sell later? Yeah, oh, that was a I spent the you know too much time on that too. And there were times yeah. when you know I like built up a war chest. And I thought, oh, okay, we're good. You know, we can put a little more in, hire a few more people. You know, we can, you know, jump to the next level. And then, like thirty days later, the price had dropped by like forty percent. And, you know, I was pulling out my own funds just to keep us going. Um, it was definitely quite challenging. Yeah. Yeah, you should like maybe provide an internal service for all the BCH based companies there. It's similar to my problem. Like, um, I, I do hosting. I sell electricity to miners, right? Mm -hmm. And at the end of the month, they have to pay my electricity. But they always delay it by five days, ten days. Hmm. Because they, they, they mine out BTC or BCH or whatever. And they want to get it at the right price, right? Hmm. So after so many years, the easy way is I just tell them, look, uh, I'll hold your BTC for you. I'll sell it every day. Right. I'll sell your electricity costs and your OPEX costs, right? Mm -hmm. And the remaining, you tell me what you want to do with it. I think we need some kind of service like that because there's a lot of um, BCH campaigns, like your flip starter, right? Mm -hmm. um, maybe there should be some function in there where, where you lock in like what you need immediately, say for the next six months, and thereafter you leave a, 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 an amount which can go up or down. Right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise... We'll be all left with the same problem, and it's great because we have um, SLP USDT, mm -hmm. right? It's a it's a USDT version which is stable, well, somewhat stable, uh, and you can lock it in futures. Right? We have um, pro BCH exchanges like Coinflex, ha physically delivered, so they're happy to help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I think um, what I've been doing since the flip starter is I took X percentage of the coins, and I think. It might have been like around 35%. And uh, I sold them for a stable coin. Um, mm. To, you know, there's just kind of like a hackish way to get, you know, some, some hedging done. Because I haven't, I haven't done a deep dive yet into CoinFlex, even though I really want to. Um, and actually, what I ended up doing was I set um, price, I set orders. Uh, what are they called? Limits, limit orders, or whatever. And then, mm -hmm. so I actually always set the prices to be sure that I was always increasing my net amount of BCH with that the money that I set aside for the stable coin. So, actually, by by always by just waiting for the market to rise and fall, I actually increased the the value of my my hedge over time. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that was that was actually pretty easy. You know, because like, but that, but 
some people start putting money into trading and they don't have the discipline, I think, because they're like, oh, you know, I bought my USDC at, you know, 278 and now Bitcoin Cash is worth 450. Oh, my God, I better buy back in, you know, and then that, that that's a mistake. You know, so you have to be patient. And so, I mean, I think a service would be like you described would be interesting, but also then, you know, what about the the custody risk and the, you know, central point of failure issues? Mm. I guess, or, or maybe someone can make some sort of simple service. I mean, we have D token. Mm -hmm. Maybe it can be done a D token by something simple. Right. Yeah. What you have to do is take a position in the future somewhere and then reverse the position on D token and it'll be on chain. That's mm -hmm. probably the best. Way. Yeah. That's interesting. Because the, the thing is, you don't need the cash immediately, right? You, you would do financial planning for the next six months. Mm -hmm. I need money here, here, and here, right? Mm -hmm. So you lock the price down now. And when you need to spend the money, you reverse your position in the futures, send the BCH, get back your USDT and spend that and then unlock your position of futures and up or down, nothing to do with you. That's really interesting. So it, one place you would long and the other place you would basically hedge. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you would, you would take a position in, in futures. And then when you actually need it, you send your BCH out to sell and that price, like however the price goes up or down, you, you win or lose you, the, the amount you win on futures, you'll lose in spot. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. So, so you're always at the same price. Oh, I see. I see. Right. I mean, this is, uh, it's, it's important, I think, for, for people. I mean, it's easy for you because it's just you, right? But when there's a team, and primarily these teams that hold it in a multi sig, right? Mm. It, it becomes. And, and once you have uh, USDT or, or any other coin that's not in a multi sig, it's very hard for them to agree, right? Because it's all one person. These are small teams. They, don't, they won't hire a finance guy, right? Mm. So it would be a simple solution. Which is why I really want to have a good wallet, which has SLP USDT on multisig. That will solve that problem as well. Hmm. That's interesting. So, are you, are you working on any any wallets or or anything like that? Um. I I talk with a couple of wallets. I talked to a wallet in BSV actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine that. Um. Uh. But none of them have the functionality that, I, well, again, I'm not a product guy, right? I'm not a tech guy. I, mm. I don't know, but I, I do think we're missing that kind of function. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I heard like a uh, money button is losing their position as main wallet. And there's like two others there, huh. yeah, something like that. And then it's, it's more robust. I think we have the one go to Bitcoin.com, right? Mm. I, I can't name the second actually. <laughs> I think that might, might be an issue for us. I don't think, I don't think one wallet can do everything. No, yeah. well, I we're definitely short on wallets. I, I would say the number two is electronic cash, you know. But you know, it's not on your phone. That's the issue. They do have a mobile version, but yeah, the UI is um is pretty, you know, it requires you to be a power user, really. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I I want to build a wallet, um, but yeah, I haven't. Because I, I feel like today's wallets are like 1.0, just HODL wallets, you know, like you send and receive, but mostly it's about keeping track of your, you know, how much you have. But I think we need wallets that are uh, actually nudge you to do things with um, your Bitcoin Cash. Uh, for example, that has an integrated merchant directory and, you know, will send you offers and... You know, if you're walking by a merchant that accepts Bitcoin Cash, that it'll nudge you and say, hey, the, this place accepts it, you know, and maybe they have a special offer, maybe 5% off breakfast, you know, when you pay uh, with Bitcoin Cash. And I, I think that the, you know, potentially even the peer-to-peer -peer liquidity functionality would do well inside the same wallet. And we can, can, can create a new kind of transaction that is specific for remittances so that you can get cash in on one on one side on the sending side and cash out on the receiving side and it's one fluid uh transaction you know uh so that mm -hmm. you know you at least we're getting people into an app because remittances is such a huge market i feel like that's really 
the the way uh, to get people uh, into Bitcoin Cash. You know, once once even though they're only using it for a transport layer in the beginning, maybe we're getting them into our app and we're getting them into our mind space uh, because at the end of the day, Bitcoin Cash is not just a tool for utility, but I think it's also a narrative. It's it's a worldview. What do you think? Um, I think um, the problem with wallets is that Bitcoin Cash are very idealistic, right? They, they want to have you to custody their keys. And so for that, to recommend a wallet, it has to be open source, right? Yeah. And an open source wallet is not profitable. So um, what happens is you have uh, not-for-profit wallets like Binance, they have trust, right? But basically they're building inroads to their exchange. Hmm. Um, and you have like BitPay, right? BitPay, they, they have this retail friendly, but at the end of the day, it's so that they can click the link to pay BitPay, right? Um, mm -hmm. BitPay has Copay, which is great because Copay is like BitPay with no frills. Yeah. Um, I think for us, we have GoCrypto. Um, I'm not sure what wallet they're using, uh, but I think uh, for a nice wallet to come out, it has to make profit. So either like what you said, it's like adverts, right? You get the free stuff, but you keep getting spammed with the credit card to buy Bitcoin or or, or bet on Satoshi Dice or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, the other version is an inroad into exchanges. So we don't have a BCH friendly exchange that is big enough to do that, I think. And we don't have a pure BCH pro merchant solution. Uh, Go Crypto being the one, our main. I'm not sure if they have a wallet. They, they, they might. I think they do. Uh, I think it's called Ellie, maybe. Yeah. And the third way you use wallets is probably, in China, it's happening a lot now. It's like staking. So so staking within the wallet, right? But mm. that kind of goes, it, it's, it's non-custodial, but it's actually going into custodial. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe pursue something like money button, right? Make something that's on online and, and just build it, build the volume and figure it out later, like PayPal. Hmm. I mean, like, we don't have to innovate. There's lots of stuff that other coins are already doing. We just have to pick the model and do it. Yeah. Well, you said, you know, we don't have a, a BCH friendly exchange, but frankly, I think that the centralized uh, exchanges are, hmm. are going, you know, they're dinosauring out. I think the future is peer-to-peer -peer liquidity, uh, you know, like local.bitcoin.com, for example, particularly in the developing world, which is, I think, the most fertile place for get, you know, the cash use case. And so I think that, you know, we actually we have we are obligated uh, to build uh, that that, you know, our own kind of local Bitcoins uh, network because, um, you know, we we don't. I, I think centralized exchanges are getting um, taken over. They're getting, uh, they're being penetrated by uh, nation states, and it's going to become a highly controlled environment where we're not, pro we're probably not going to thrive. Yes, but that's too far in the future. I mean, right now, I mean, if you're trying to solve the wallet problem, someone's got to pay the bill, right? Because it's it's like it's a free thing. If you yeah. if you have to be open source, right? But most people in Bitcoin Cash are are understand why you want. Bitcoin Cash, and you understand the importance of non-custodial wallets. So it's a loss-making proposition. No, I think there are a lot of a lot of ways to profit. Like if you have a peer-to-peer -peer exchange within the wallet, and I think Zapit, you know, has uh, is working on that. You could mm -hmm. take a percentage out of every transaction that happens. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're doing special remittance uh, transactions, like I described. Uh, yeah. you know, average remittance fees across the globe are seven to eight percent. So there, there's a little bit of space there. You know, yeah. it's it's definitely uh, uh, you know, it requires onboarding a lot of people. Uh, you know, it's like a hot, low margin, high, you know, high number of people model. Yeah. But um, in fact, I think it's necessary because we have to onboard. You know, for the for the viability of Bitcoin Cash itself, we need to onboard huge amounts of people. I mean, we're we're falling down the charts a little bit. I think we're losing a little bit of momentum. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, we lost the dope. <laughs> Although I checked this morning, they're back, they fell back a bit. <laughs> that was very disturbing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it, it, 
But I mean, Litecoin's still ahead of us. Chainlink, you know, that's that's almost as disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, I think like that. That's the key issue. I mean, like I, I'm very low key, right? I, I I like it that people who know me know me. People who don't know me, just please don't know who I am. Um, and uh, you know, this is the first time I've done something like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, this is my virginity. I gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> I was saving it for Hayden. I'll but... still I'll still love you in the morning, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Um, but I think, I think that, that, that is like one of the main reasons why I want to come talk to you. I think like we, we, we we're at a, we have a problem now. We have a severe problem. It's, um, I think we lack urgency, mm. the, whole, the whole, the whole ecosphere. I mean, uh, I think we've come to a point where we really have to prove ourselves or, or this bull market, if, if it blows over and we don't do something great, like next bear run. It's going to be worse than what it is now. Hmm. I, I agree with what you just said. Yeah. Yeah. I feel <clears throat> the same way. Yeah. And like the reason why I think you're important is because uh, BCH, due to the BSV split, we lost a lot of marketing talent, like front facing mass adoption talent, because people who went to BSV, they like the brand, right? Mm hmm. So a lot of people who are within BCH in the similar role as you, they, they, they're not bringing anything new, right? You're, you're our most recent hire. Thanks for joining the team. <laughs> Glad to be of work. So, so you, you see what's outside of BCH, right? I think for the past years, BCH has become more and more inward facing. They don't, I mean, like me, right? I, I like it so much that 90% of my hobby time, it's BCH. 10% I spend looking at other stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I don't kind of stuff. When you talk about Dash, I know, I know you have history with them, but I, I'm still interested to ask, right? What what can Dash do that we can also do? You know, I think I think I think you can bring that that you can bring that to us. Mm-hmm. No one at BCH right now can do it. First, we're weak at marketing, right? We're weak at PR by virtue of BSV tearing like all those talent away. Right? Mm. And, and second, we haven't had in, in, in like influx of new blood in this sphere. Hmm. Right, you're you're our freshest uh, 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 acquisition, right? <laughs> like how you came here. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> but we welcome you anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was kind of messy how I arrived, but um, yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know. From my point, I was just like, I'm done with Dash. But th- those people didn't want to let let go, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, like. Uh, for the past past two months, I'm, it's been very slow. Mm-hmm. I think um, it, it, we kind of lacked a, a continuity, right? After November, mm. and um, I think it's a shame, right? Because uh, we achieved something pretty great, right? Yeah. Like no other coin has done something similar. Yeah. Right, and we're not a small cap coin either. Hmm. And um, I think I think it's to do with sense of urgency, right? At the time, we had a problem we had to resolve, and everyone put their hearts together, and we showed unity, right? And we did something great. Yeah. Right. I, I don't understand why we don't have that same passion to to do something even better, right? Thing is, it's ever maybe that, that, that... maybe we're tired from a year of you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're not tired. You you joined later. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I suffered through quite a bit of the pain at the end, but yeah. But I'm I'm still excited. Um, yeah, that's, that's, which is why I say. I mean, like, uh, why I thought wow, well, you called me up. I thought no, you're 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 a good choice. You're a good choice because you're new, and you're not as tired as the rest of us. Hmm. And, and I do think that no one realizes what we've done, right? And. Uh, in the past, it's all been about toxicity, feeling that we're not unified. But if you look at what we did, we're very unified. Hmm. No, it was an extreme case. I mean, your numbers that you did towards the end, right? The nodes and the miners and the whatever, right? That that was facts, right? Yeah. It's nice to, to see that, oh, we actually all agree on something. <laughs> it's not as <laughs> nothing as you think, right? Obviously, the case in point was extreme enough to... 
to have that kind of numbers reflect. But it's amazing what we did. So, I mean, yeah. if it's amazing what we did, why can't we use that same that same unity teamwork to take BCH higher, right? Mm -hmm. so the problem of marketing or PR, right? Which again, I bring back to the point why, why I want to talk to you is because you're new blood. You're not as tired. Hmm. I'm right? still very I mean, excited. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 you are a good voice to talk to all the team players in the ecosphere and tell them, look, you spent so much time getting rid of this problem. Right. Why aren't you doing anything now? Hmm. Right. I think the first issue is there's no longer a sense of urgency. Right? They don't see it. Right. I, I I'm agree. a minor. I, I see the sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I write like reports for my clients who trade on, on, a, on a special view on what coins are good or bad. Right. And I have a mining indicator. The mining indicator is a short indicator when to short a certain coin. Because I know from the miners whether a coin is at risk of being attacked. 51% mm. attack. Because yeah. right? that's a short one. And I always tell my clients the magic number is 1%. Whether you're a GPU or script or SHA2, if a coin's value or a coin's share of the hash rate or plus the price right, drops below 1%, that coin is at high risk of being reworked. Hmm. Because if it's more than 1%, it's, it's hard for a pool to shove a little hash rate to, like miners, most of the time, they're not hostile, mm -hmm. right? But if it's so small that it's so easy to do, that any solo miner could do it, they do it. Short it on, on whichever exchange you want, crash it, and then the price comes down, they profit. Hmm. That's interesting. Right. I, I, I write a report and I report on all the coins, which are red alert. This is under the 1% protection. I think is the base that you need. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think if we don't do anything over the next three months, I'm going to put BCH on red alert <laughs> <laughs> and all my life. No, I'm big on BCH. That's crazy. Hmm. So what, what do you think? And we need to do. It's a real do you have any thoughts on that? Get our shit together on marketing and really build it up. I mean, like, that's the thing. We're all very idealistic. We don't want to pump and dump, hmm. right? But you, you've, you, 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 your vision is more open, right? Mm -hmm. You can look at Ash, you can look at Polkadot, you can look at uh, Aave, all these with very strong PR teams. Yeah. For them, obviously, they want to profit. But for us, it's an existential threat. If our BTC BCH ratio grows a bit too low, there's no shortage of of, of maximalists that hate us. Mm -hmm. Right? Ignore the miners. Right? You can you can rent hash. Right? Let's not say miners who are hostile and want to short. Right? Price is a problem. Hmm. Yeah, I almost wonder if we should hire uh, like a PR agency. I mean, my yeah, sometimes like my stuff. Uh, yeah, all all my direction is towards onboarding new people, and I'm about to launch uh, something new around that that I hope will will make a few waves. But there there's another side to this, which is addressing the the narratives and the talking points in the crypto echo chamber, and. All of that is such a huge turnoff for me that I, I actually, I try not to pay it too much attention. But I wonder if if more attention should be paid to that, you know? I just think sometimes that, you know, when we're like, you know, oh, BTC sucks because of this, BCH fixes that, you know, that we're not like, I feel like we're we're falling off the rails of onboarding the next million people, you know, which is which is a longer term play. You know, as you said earlier, you know, my, the, uh, to something I said, but I think that that's the real way forward. I don't know. What do you think? It is the way forward, but in the short term, we do need a pump. I mean, BSV does it three to five times a year, right? It's it's insane. It goes three x and then drops to one point five x, and then soon it goes back to what it was before, right? Mm -hmm. But they're they have planning, and they have marketing, 
right? Mm. They, they had a, a well-oiled engine to do that, mm. right? They, they, they equally understand the exist existential threat idea. Obviously, BCH has a lot of pro miners that are pro BCH, right? Yeah. As as uh, uh, the recent voting showed, right? We mm. we really do care, yeah. right? Uh, we don't we don't like maxis, um. But like, it's not a problem that we can solve. I mean, if we could, we would have solved it already. And I think it boils down to like two issues. One is that we're, we're very dispersed. We're not we're not like a team, right? So we all advertise the part about BCH which we like or helps our business. Hmm. So the message is muddy. Yes. And yeah. secondly, there's the free rider idea, right? All these whales holding so much, why don't they pay for it, right? That's the, that concept, right? Hmm. But if you think about it, what we did over the past year, like there was unity, right? And all the so-called whales that don't free ride, they all put heart into it to fix the problem. We were all concerned. Hmm. We did it once already, why don't you do it again? And if you do it this time and you do pump the price 3x, everyone wins. Yeah. So it, it's feasible, right? I mean, like, like what you said, Justin, you had your own ideas on how to do it. But that's just going to be like your 10 fingers trying to poke something out, you know? I mean, when you want to fight, you bunch them into two hands and you beat the crap out of the other guy, right? <laughs> yeah, true. Well, that's what we got to do. And, and we did it already. We just did it to a French guy. <laughs> 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 we can do it again. Yeah. I love this enthusiasm. You've really got me generating ideas. Like I was thinking maybe of making like a short video that like recounts, you know, that tells kind of the story of of what what happened last year, you know? Yeah, you should. You should you should a scare everyone in BCH right now. Right? Cuz we we are unified. We all agreed on one thing, right? Hmm. Scare them and say, "Look, the game's not over." The miners say if it goes below 1%, you're going to die. Hmm. And then two, like, tell them you did something great last year, right? To do this, solve this marketing problem, the two issues that you thought was a problem isn't really a problem. You just got to sit together and work together, get all the whales on board, get the uh, the entire ecosphere on board, and work as a team. Hmm. We did it for idealistic reasons, right? Yeah. Although... Obviously, we all didn't like Amori for different reasons. <laughs> <laughs> But but we did it, right? Why can't we do it again? Although that was rebellion, right? That was being mm. against something. And mm. this is an observation that Amori also made um, in his mm. criticisms of the ecosystem is that it's easy to get everybody against something. But at the moment mm. when you try to get everybody for something, that's when all the fault lines appear. And there's some well, truth to that. How about getting everyone against the idea of BCH going to zero? Hmm. I see it. If it goes under 1%, right? We've all seen it happen to BTG, ETC. It happens. Yeah. People will make profit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe we should have like keep a, that a measurement, like you know, have a web page that shows like where we're at, you know, like okay, we're at you know 1.5 and 1.2, and you know, red alert, you know, because no, things I, that I, it's just, things it's just that get measured get done. That, that that's a truism, you know. Well, I I would say we're still hot from what happened in November. We don't mm. need that. I mean, like when we started thinking about the issues in March, uh, April, all the numbers, right? No one believed it, right? They thought that everyone was running, um, uh, oh, ABC. But I, I told them they weren't they, they were, ever since you tried it the first time they already tried something else. No one believed me. Hmm. Right. So I think we don't need to go back and convince. We just need to tell them BCH is going to die. Mm -hmm. And George has the answer because he's from outside of BCH and he knows what everyone else is doing. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's Look, also why some people distrust me. <laughs> like I'm not yeah, speaking terms with like Mark Demisel, unfortunately, you know, which I would like. And to that's one of the reasons why I'd, I'd, I'd like to talk to you. Right. Because I think like when you came on board, I did ask everyone, like everyone I knew, like who you were. Mm -hmm. Right. And I like to say like 
eighty percent didn't like you. <laughs> but, but, of the twenty percent, the vast majority are whales. Oh, okay. They see the bigger picture. They see you have some value to bring, right? Yeah, I I can be a pain in the butt, you know. Like lately, I've been given a, a hard time to like the protocol devs. Yeah, but I do it because like. I want, you know, things to move forward, you know? I I think I've gotten good at actually kicking asses, you know? Like, I do that yeah, internally I, with my own team. And I think that, that, that helps us get, you know, get more results. Yeah, I think it's the tone. Like, get everyone together and do it together. Hmm. Um, I mean, like, uh, stuff you do now, what Colin does, what Satoshi Angel does, it's it's all very internal-facing. Right, it's not, it's not very external. I don't think we need to do anything more internal facing. Ever since last year, we know who everyone is. Hmm. Right, I knew a lot of BTS people before, but after last year, I basically know everyone. Yeah. Although, for example, I do these these videos, these interviews, because I want new people coming on board to know who you know and to to know that we have really good people. And you know, so they have people that they look up to, and they're like, "Okay, Bitcoin Cash has." Jonathan has mm. Peter, it has Roger, you know, and like, wow, you know, this team is going somewhere. And, and also so that I can, you know, repurpose little bits of these interviews to uh, like Jonathan talking about scale net, you know, like I'm going to repurpose that into little videos on Twitter and be like, yeah, we're scaling, you know, and I think mm. that that has outward, um, well, outward value. We need, fresh blood. we need, we need less internal facing more George types, right? Because it's, it's a, like you said, an echo chamber, right? Yeah. Like the, they, they, the, these people sharing new ideas, they will talk to people around them, but they're all dulled down by now. We need to break out. We need to break out. I agree. Um, we need someone like you to break out. So, so let me tell you, I'm thinking about doing a major contest over this year because I've, I've mentioned a goal as getting 1 million new people on board. And so basically we have the, the setup to, uh, with forms and a database and, and things too, uh, and teams that, you know, training and whatnot. And so the idea is, you know, on people are going to uh, onboard people. There's going to be photos of new people with their wallets and you know maybe uh the winner is going to get uh you know maybe 10 or 20 bch whoever onboards the most people and then i'm going to try to get other people in the ecosystem to put uh you know all this is going to go on with like a scoreboard on a, on a web page at bitcoincash.site and i'm going to try to get everybody in the ecosystem to to sign on you know in support is one one way or another maybe do a flip starter get some more prize money um you know maybe get like different players in the ecosystem like Binance or, or Edge Wallet to, to participate, you know, we can push their products too, you know, as we build up these teams in Africa and, and South Asia and Latin America. I don't know. Hmm. What, how does that strike you? Uh, great, great initiative. I mean, it's new, but again, it goes back to the same issue that we had before. I mean, it's the 10 fingers, right? Everyone's doing a little bit, right? You poke your fingers into someone, your, your fingers will get blunt and get hurt. Why don't you just, you know, don't do this. Sure, your finger may be like pretty good because it's new, right? It doesn't hurt as much. But you know, get, you know, get blunt. Same thing. Echo chamber is because your fingers are blunt now, right? My friend, I'll tell them BCA, BCA, BCA over again, right? If there's something new that someone thought about, ScaleNet or whatever, the person listening to it has heard like all this stuff before, but they really just care about the price. I'm sorry. Life is realistic. The friends around you, they just want to know when to buy. Right, right. right. And, and, and it, it, it's something that goes against like BCH ideal because we, we're fundamentally strong, right? Mm -hmm. We want to see our fundamentals win over the long term, but we have a short term existen existential threat with regards to the price. It's mm -hmm. very realistic. So, and like, who says no to a 3x pump? So, basically, th for you, this is uh, a big marketing and PR push to we'll just put all of those together and and i don't know raise the overall awareness of bt hmm. roger's doing so much on his own right help him work as a team yeah i mean i talked to to roger I, he doesn't we work, we work as a team mostly for last year we all know who each other are 
we can do it again. Hmm. You know, I, I guess. Yeah, I guess I with uh, you know, with a big a big push, like it should have a, a theme, you know, and I'm just not sure what a new theme would be other than you know onboarding lots of new people. I think, I think what you could do for us is just to make the rally call and just help me spread the word that you know if you don't do something, price will kill you, hmm. right? And look, I'm not from your echo chamber. I've seen what happens outside, right? It can be done. Like for, for a moment, drop your idealism and look at practical survival, hmm. right? And once all of us are on board, we go sit down and have a chat with interested parties and say, look, let's do this together. Hmm. You know, create the sense of urgency and we'll band together and do it again. We, know, we already know who everyone else is, everyone is already. Yeah. Anyone who was anyone took sides. Right. And eventually switch sides. <laughs> <laughs> See, you led you led that one movement, right? Switching sides. You can lead us again, George. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, right? Yeah, I mean, I do like I did notice the decline. Like when I started working with Dash in 2018, Dash was like Sorry, 12. I'm, I'm 1%, I'm so I might drop out anytime. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. and yeah, yeah you're, I think you're actually, my point is I, I want to talk to you. I don't, I'm very low key. I'm willing to give that up just to tell people, look, George is okay. And two, we need George. No, you're not going to like run the whole PR campaign. I don't think anyone will, will do that immediately, but you can be the rallying call. You can be the guy that sets the example of switching sides. For example, you did it mm -hmm. right. Set the example, get everyone going, bring your enthusiasm. We did it once. We can do it again. Hmm. I agree. All right. Well, yeah. So out of respect for your low battery, uh, we should probably wrap bad, up. Bad, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to say to end? Or? I mean, I want to talk to you about the SLP Foundation. You know how you guys are doing there. What, what's what? We... Um, I can set aside another chat for that. Okay. I mean, we're a bit slow uh, from the November event. Mm -hmm. So maybe when we have a website up, it makes more sense to go into more detail there. Okay. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. But yeah, sense of urgency. Please instill that in everyone you know. Okay. All right. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, this has been a great talk. Thank you so much, Peter. Yeah. I really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Thanks for your time. No, thank you.